supposed to be doing. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope in God's call to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit, grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Our first reading this morning is from the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me as I read Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a walking wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people the Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. A reading from the book of Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism, baptism of repentance telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
From the Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Christ. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you as we are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. From the very beginning of the Bible, the first chapter of Genesis, our first lesson today, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. That is, even before there was night and day, the wind, or to use the form of the Hebrew, the spirit, blew over and through the world as God created it. And then, from the Acts of the Apostles, the greatest, most effective preacher ever, the Apostle Paul, meeting with new unschooled believers, as we have it in our second lesson today, Paul laid hands on them, and the Holy Spirit came upon them. And then, in the Gospel reading that I just read, Jesus, standing in the river Jordan on a bright day, the water of repentance dripping off him. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. Some weeks, I stand up here and I do my best to explain the lessons that we have just read from Holy Scripture and I will admit that it is a little difficult to find the theme that ties them together. And some weeks, something leaps out from one lesson that is so important that I ignore the other lessons. But this Sunday, this shining feast of the baptism of our Lord, as we begin this season of Epiphany, a season dedicated to looking for the light of God's love, on this day, we have no trouble at all. The scripture teaches us about the Holy Spirit of God. Is it a wind? Is it an electrical charge that moves through our fingers? Or is it a holy dove lighting on a chosen one? Well, of course, we may perceive the Holy Spirit in any of those ways. It seems to move freely and definitely not under any control of ours. It seems that some people like Paul and John the Baptist and definitely Jesus, some people have readier access to feeling the Spirit than others. But what is it? Or better, who is the Holy Spirit? Well, hold on to that question. Clearly, that is the subject of our lessons from Scripture today. 
But our task for the next few minutes is not merely to unpack these readings. We have also to make sense of the scripture in light of the lives that we are living. And so we turn to what's going on in our world. And I know, why on earth would we want to spend any more time thinking about the heartbreaking events of this past week? More than 3,000 people have died every day in this past week in our nation, died from the effects of the coronavirus. And then there was the seditious and deadly riot in the US Capitol on Wednesday. And if the Holy Spirit blew over and through the chaos at, creation, at the creation of the world, don't you think that the Holy Spirit could blow through Washington and clean up things a little bit? Has the Holy Spirit of God abandoned us here on earth? Have we been left alone to wander our own way? And if that's the case, how can we get her back? How do we get the Spirit back to blow through us? Where is the Holy Spirit? Well, we get to answer that question today because that answer comes from both the scripture and from our lived experience. After Christmas and before Lent, we celebrate a season that the church calls Epiphany. It is named after that moment when God is revealed to the world, when strange visitors from the East visit the baby Jesus. Matthew's Gospel tells the story, and the church always celebrates that day, the day of the Epiphany, 12 days after Christmas, which means that it is most often on a weekday. Some years, we do not hear the story of those wise visitors during our Sunday morning service. In fact, this year, the Feast of the Epiphany was on last Wednesday. And the juxtaposition of our holy scripture and our lived experience was simply stunning this year. The very holiday when we celebrate the light of God's love shining on the whole world was the same day when rioters brought death and destruction in a place that is dedicated to the protection and care of our whole nation. What are we supposed to do with that kind of heinous contradiction? Do we give up on the church? Do we give up on our nation? And if we don't give up on one or the other, how do we make sense of it in our day-to-day -day lives? Some do it by compartmentalizing. That was Wednesday, they say, and this is Sunday, so here in church, just talk about what today means and leave the horrors of last week behind us. Most of you know me well enough to know that I'm gonna circle back to Wednesday. But just for now, let us talk about today. Today, the first Sunday after the Epiphany, today we celebrate the baptism of our Lord all of a sudden, we have left the infant in the manger, smiling up at the odd visitors with their strange gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. We have abruptly changed scene and time. Today, we are in the Jordan River with that crazy prophet, John the Baptist. He eats bugs and honey, which makes me think he must always be hungry and cranky. And he is preaching to the people about what horrible sinners they all are. And he must be some kind of awesome preacher because the people follow him into the river. And he washes them with the muddy, cold water of the Jordan as a sign that they are sorry for their sins. And he tells them that one is coming who is greater than he. Now, 
We, all these years later, we have an advantage over those wet and muddy sinners because we know who he's talking about. He's talking about Jesus. And don't you think that Jesus probably knows that he's talking about Jesus too? So, so why does Jesus get baptized? Jesus doesn't have any sins to be forgiven. Nobody knows that better than Jesus himself. But Jesus follows John right into the river. Jesus gets washed by that muddy water and the heavens open. And there is the Holy Spirit. And every year at this time, we remember that Jesus was baptized he, but he was baptized not only because he was a human being in search of the divine. Jesus went into the Jordan because he was God in search of humanity. Jesus went to John and received John's very human gift, the gift of care, the gift of compassion, the gift of presence, and suddenly, John and everyone else who was there received the divine gift of the presence of God. On this day in the church calendar, we celebrate a day very much like Christmas, a day when heaven and earth touch one another and God comes very close to us here on earth. And it makes us long for the presence of God in our present reality, especially in weeks like the one we have had this week. You know, when you go to seminary, you are taught that there are special days in the year that are good for baptism. And then when you start working with God's people in a parish church, you learn that the best day for a baptism is the day that the family members can surround the person being baptized. That is a day when the family can get to the town from far away and a day when no one else has to work and a day when the baby doesn't have the sniffles. When you go to seminary, you are taught that baptism should happen during the Sunday morning service because after all, baptism is about joining the church. But when you are serving God's people, there might be, say, a global pandemic. And the last thing you want to do is invite people into the church. But then, of course, you can't pour water on someone through YouTube or Facebook. Practical dilemmas like this one remind me of the central problem of today's reading from Holy Scripture. Where is the Holy Spirit today, now, when we need the presence of God so much in our world, where so much is going so horribly wrong? When you go to seminary, you are taught that the feast of the baptism of our Lord is a day when you should schedule baptisms. And when you shepherd a congregation through a pandemic, you know that you should never have more than 10 people in the church at the same time. So, <clears throat> when Charlotte Godden's parents talked to me about Charlotte being baptized, I explained to them about these two contradictory notions, and we decided that Charlotte would be baptized yesterday, on Saturday, with just her parents, godparents, and grandmothers in attendance, and that we would play the video of her baptism this morning at this service. Charlotte, of course, is an old hand at videos. You know her. She played the baby Jesus in our Christmas pageant video this year. You saw her kicking her feet as her dad read the story of Mary bringing forth her firstborn son and laying him in the manger. So yesterday, Charlotte brought her family to church and she was baptized. And you will get to experience that in a moment. 
But first, I want to tell you that Charlotte's experience yesterday answers the questions that we have been asking today. Where is the Holy Spirit of God? Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is God present with us as we live into the promises that we make in baptism. How do we answer the horror of a day like Wednesday? We do what Jesus did. We step into the muddy water of baptism and we are washed clean in God's grace. And then we spend our lives living into the promises that we make. Because baptism is not just about washing away sin. Jesus knew and showed us that baptism is about taking on a new life. A new life in the presence of God. A new life bringing the presence of God into our lives and loving all of God's people. All of God's people with the love of God. In the promises of baptism, we are invited into the life of God and the heavens open and a voice from heaven cries out, you are my child, my beloved. With you, I am pleased. Watch Charlotte's baptism now and listen for those promises. Make them along with her. Renew the covenant made at your own baptism. And then, washed clean and pointing in the right direction, we can face the troubles of our present day, knowing that the Holy Spirit of God blows around us and through us and will not leave us alone. And then on days like Wednesday, we will know exactly what to do. We will love one another with the love of God. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Charlotte Ray Goddings to receive the sacrament of baptism. Will you be responsible for seeing that the child you present is brought up in the Christian faith and life? I will, with God's help. Will you, by your prayers and witness, help this child to grow into the full stature of Christ? I will, with God's help. Do you renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God? Do you renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God? I renounce them. Do you renounce all sinful desires that draw you from the love of God? I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your savior? I do. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord? I do. Now, this question is for you ladies who are witnessing this. Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? We will. Oh, come on. Say it nice and loud so everybody can hear it. And all of you at home, I'm going to ask the question again, and I want to hear a nice, loud, we will, ringing through Westfield, all right? Will you who witness these vows do all in your power to support this child in her life in Christ? We will. Then let us join with Charlotte, who is committing herself to Christ, and renew our own baptismal covenant. And the rest of the service is for all of us, okay? Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. <clears throat> will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? <laughs> Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? Will you cherish the wondrous works of God and protect the beauty and integrity of all creation? I will with God's help. Let us now pray for this child who is to receive the sacrament of new birth. Deliver her, O Lord, from the way of sin and death. Lord, hear our prayer. Open her heart to your grace and truth. Lord, hear our prayer. Fill her with your holy and life-giving spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Keep her in the faith and communion of your holy church. Lord, hear our prayer. Teach her to love others in the power of the Spirit. Lord, hear our prayer. Send her into the world in witness to your love. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring her to the fullness of your peace and glory. Lord, <coughs> Grant, O Lord, that all who are baptized into the death of Jesus Christ, your Son, may live in the power of his resurrection and look for him to come again in glory who lives and reigns now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and prayers. We thank you, Almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Amen. All right, Charlotte. So Brittany, I'm going to ask you to hold her head over the font. Charlotte, this water was warm when we started this morning, but it's kind of cool now. Mm -hmm. Charlotte Ray, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, let's, let's pat your head dry. <laughs> okay. There, Dad, you can pat her head dry. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Charlotte, you are sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked as Christ's own forever. Amen. And this is not in your leaflet, but it's a little custom that we have. Dan, would you light this candle? Thank you. 
in this season when we celebrate the baptism of Jesus and the baptism of Charlotte, I know, we call the season Epiphany, which means there's a light. We're looking for the light, and Charlotte sees the light. I hope that we're catching this on camera. I know, it's beautiful, isn't it? So here's the thing, Charlotte. It's a sign. We want you to let the light of Jesus' love to shine in your heart forever. Everybody say, Amen. All right. I'm going to give the candle to one of your grandmothers to hold, okay, so that it doesn't endanger us. <laughs> there you go. Woo, 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 woo. There you go. Laren, if you would just hold this for the rest of the service, put it out whenever you need to. Okay. And then, Charlotte, the trick is to keep that candle and every year on the anniversary of your baptism to, sh to light it up again and watch this video of the day you were baptized. All right. So now we're back at the top of page seven in our service leaflet. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that by water and the Holy Spirit you have bestowed upon this your servant the forgiveness of sin and have raised her to the new life of grace. Sustain her, O Lord, in your Holy Spirit. Give her an inquiring and discerning heart, the courage to will and to persevere, a spirit to know and to love you, and the gift of joy and wonder in all your works. Amen. Let us welcome the newly baptized all together, please. We receive you into the household of God, confess the faith of Christ crucified, proclaim his resurrection, and share with us in his eternal priesthood. The candidate for holy baptism will now be presented. I present Charlotte. Shine in your church, O oh God, embolden us in a dark world to speak truthfully and to act with the courage of love, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine on your world, O oh God, heal the warring nations and the wounding of the earth to give us peace at last, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine for your people, O oh God, Make us one human family who clothe each other with mercy and feed each other with justice, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine in our hearts, O God. Help us to reach the heavens and deep in our souls to seek you, to find you and to know you, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine in the saints, both the living and the departed, O God. Today we remember especially Arakli G. Kalfa and Georgiana Toscano Talfa, for whom the sanctuary lamp burns, and all those we call before you now. Teach us to follow their lead to out outrageous faith and eternal love, this day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine for the afflicted, O God. Remind them of your deep compassion and how you tenderly bear all our sorrows. I invite your prayers. This day and always. Christ, be our light. Shine, O oh God, as the light that creates, the light that calls, the light that comes again with every dawn. Shine as the light that scatters every shadow and the light in which we promise to walk with your help. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you 
in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of our Savior Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace to all of you here today. Peace to you. Peace to you. And I hope that at home you are able to exchange the peace of Christ with a hug or a kiss. Here in church, there are just a couple of people in our stream team here today, and we have bowed and waved to one another. So there are many ways to remind one another of the presence of God in our lives. Welcome again to the Episcopal Church of the Atonement here in Westfield, Massachusetts. We are glad that you are joining us today by YouTube or Facebook or Channel 15. We know that if you are trying to watch us in live time, we had a little interruption in our internet service, and we don't know why, but we think we are back online now, and we are grateful for that. We welcome Charlotte Godden, our newest Christian, and we also welcome Jess Lee. Hey, Jess, come here. Jess is our program minister, and you have met them already. But this past week, Jess officially joined our parish. Yes. Yay! So we are, we are grateful for that. Jess uh, transferred the record of their baptism from um, their parish at Kenyon College in Ohio to join us here in the Diocese of Western Mass and the Episcopal Church of the Atonement. So that's another way that you can join with our mission of being drawn in by grace and reaching out in love. You can transfer the record of your baptism, or you can actually be baptized here. Or there are other ways to join us too, and if you want to join us here at Church of the Atonement, please be in touch with me by phone or by email, and we can make that happen. Details for how you can get in touch with us may be found on our website, which is atonementwestfield.org, and I look forward to talking with you about that. I want to thank the 63 families who have made a pledge of financial support for 2021. This is our pledge card for 2021. It's not too late for you to make a pledge of financial support. We hope that you will. Please know that every contribution that you make, including what you are able to give today, goes to help this church share the transforming love of Jesus in a broken world. Now walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember Christ's death, We proclaim Christ's resurrection. We await Christ's coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to you, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children, through Jesus Christ our Savior, the firstborn of all creation the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let us pray. Eternal God, you have graciously accepted us as living members of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen.
let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God.